Hello and welcome to the chapter 6 of Prep Maths. And today we're going to revise elementary functions. So today we will have a look and get familiar with functions, functions property and different type of functions like power functions, polynomials, exponential functions and logarithms, trigonometric functions and we will finish with function transformations. The purpose of this chapter is to revise all your knowledge about functions and also so that you will have an idea how different functions look like graphically. So we will pay a lot of attention today for the how graphs look like. So there will be a lot of graphical information. So we'll first start with function properties. In a simple words, function f is a certain rule that assigns every number of x to number y. So x here is called independent variable or the argument of the function and y is called the dependent variable or the output of the function. A function f is also often called mapping because it maps the number x to the value of fx. So for example, if we have certain number of x here, this is called a domain. And we have certain values of y, which were assigned by using the special rule f of x. And this is called range. So we take a point here and we map it to our range. So then x becomes y. So we assign domain with letter d and range with letter w. The uniqueness of mapping x to y means that each x value in the domain has the only one point on the graph of the function. For example, let's have a look at this function. So this is our example. Uh, you can see here graphically for every point x we have a certain value of y. This is how we map it. And for example for x2 there is its own value of y2 and etc. We can also visually test it. So if a vertical line is drawn through the any point of x on the x-axis, for example here, so this line will intersect with the graph of the function only at one point here with unique y and x values. So this is called vertical line test. So if you want to test uh, whether the graph is a function or not, you just randomly draw the vertical line. Also, in two-dimension coordinate, we call x-axis uh, abscissa and y-axis ordinate. So for example, if we have something shaped like this, and we draw a vertical line anywhere on x-axis, for example, here. And if we look at the function, we can see that we only intersect in one point. And so we have unique y and x here. So this means that this is a function. So if we have something a bit different, for example, we have a circle, something looking like this. And then we want to know whether this is a function or not. Again, we draw a vertical line and we get two points here. And it means that it's not a function. So we can't call something like this a function. So if you want to check whether the graph that you're looking at is a function or not, you can draw the vertical bar everywhere. And if it intersects in more than one point, it could also look like this, for example and intersect in two places, so it's also not a function. So I think it's clear what's function and what's not. So we talked about range and domain. So domain we, as I mentioned before, we assign with letter D and uh, range is with W. This is just our inputs and this our outputs. So let's have a look at this example this is our function. So for this example, we know that square root of x should be only larger or equal to zero. So our domain will lie only for x larger or equal to zero. 
and then range will be all the numbers that belong to the domain that are then transformed using the square root function into y values. So graphically, for example, if our function looks something like this, this will be our domain because it's on the x axis and this will be our outputs or our range. So domain is all possible x values that works for our function and y is a range of all possible outputs that we can get using x values in the domain. I hope it's clear here, but we can have a look also on different example. Here, this function 3x squared plus 1. So for this particular function, we can use any number, right? It's not a square root. We can use negative and positive numbers. So in this case, our domain will be all real numbers. Okay, I hope you saw the difference in the domain and you understand uh, what the domain and range is, so we can move further. And further, we're going to talk about roots of a function. If you remember, the roots were points when the equation equals to zero. And here, this is a similar concept. The roots or zeros of a function are points where our domain intersect with x-axis. Because the function at this point gets a value of zero. Depending um, on the function, the function can have one, multiple or no roots. And also here, important to mention, the solution to a given equation in one unknown can be determined by finding a roots in the function. For example, if you found roots of some equation by equaling it to zero, then by solving this equation, you can find the, the roots. If it sounds a bit more complicated, let's have a look at an example. So I, as I told you, there could be multiple options when our function is equal to zero. For example, we look here. We have function x squared. If we solve the equation x squared equal to zero, we will have one root, which is zero. So how it looks graphically? Graphically, it would look like this. So graph is called parabola and it touches origin. So we have this point here. So it has one root. And we move to the next example, x squared plus 2. And if we try to solve it and find its roots, we will end up having something like this, which has no solution or no roots. But how it looks graphically? Graphically, it would look like this. So this is x squared, this is x squared plus 2. So graphically it doesn't intersect with x-axis, that's why it has no root. It only intersects y-axis at point of 2. And the third option is when we have two roots. For example, if we solve this simple equation where x squared minus 1 equals to 0, we will have two roots. x1 will be minus 1 and x2 will be equal to 1, x1 and x2. Graphically, it looks like this here, the blue graph. It will be x squared minus 1. So it means that it touches in two points our x-axis. I hope this concept with roots makes more sense to you now if it was not very clear before when we were solving equations.